What's up guys, it's Austin from Yu Gi Oh Theory. Today I have a deck profile for you guys that I'm pretty excited about. This is my uh, True Dracos. Uh, I've been playing this deck for a very long time, like under the radar, sorta, but uh, I used to play it a lot back when they first came out, but I didn't have all the cards for it, so it wasn't like very good, but I had like a budget version. But now I have all the cards I need, uh, so this is the deck profile. Um, this deck is very good, obviously. It's the second best deck of the format. And some would say may, it, it, uh, it's really close to being the number one just because of how good it is and uh, how easily it can shut decks down and uh, just how impressive Masterpiece is just by himself. But anyway, um, uh, quick rundown, this deck is very expensive, so <laughs> there's no other way to say it. This deck is pretty expensive, so this is definitely not a budget deck. But uh, let's get right into the deck profile. Um... My deck's probably not too different from what other people are running, but it's not, like, exactly the same either. I have some certain card choices that I just prefer. Uh, first, you run your two Masterpiece. It's searchable, and you don't absolutely really want to draw it. It's it's cool if you do, but it, uh, it's your best search off diagram, so you'd rather just search it than draw it. Uh, and he's just really good overall. And, you know, it's, it's Masterpiece. Uh, next, you run three Majesty's Maiden. Uh, use it to search out your masterpiece and also any other true Draco monsters you might need uh, during either player's turn, which is really good. Because what you can do with her is just wait for your opponent to activate an effect, add a masterpiece to your hand, and then uh, chain one of the true Draco traps to tribute your, uh, this plus it, and then bam, you have a masterpiece during your opponent's turn, and it's just really oppressive in general. Uh, next, for the true Dracos, I run one Ignister Heat. Uh, he's limited to one, so you only run one. Uh, I'd probably run him at two if he wasn't limited. Um, and I don't even want to get into Dynamite Knight. That is terrible. I hate that. I use it as tokens now. That's the funny thing. Uh, but yeah, it just, it searches a, uh, um, spell or spell card from your deck, to, uh, to your hand. You can either activate it or add it to your hand. And 2400 attack isn't too bad either, so. Uh, next for the last monsters, uh, you just play three Amano Iwato. To play through hand traps and already uh, like um, established boards is really good going second using a mono Iwato, but uh, going first is good against hand traps. Like pretty much that's the only thing that's good against going first is hand traps. Which at my locals like it's not a very competitive locals, so they don't play a whole lot of hand traps. But uh, it definitely is something to worth looking out for and something that I'll continue to play in the main deck just because of how good it is. Uh, that's it with the monsters. Now the spells. Very little monsters because you are playing card demise. So uh, you don't really want monsters in your hand. Uh, first, you run three two Draco Heritage. Uh, it's really good just for getting extra draws. Um, sometimes you can get one draw off of this. Sometimes you can even get two, but most of the time it's one. Uh, next, you run three true Draco Disciples. Uh, you pretty much only use it just as a tribute. Um, but you need three just to continuously have tributes. Uh, and Heritage has that bonus effect, plus also having a good regular effect. So it's just overall pretty good. Uh, next, you run three Gigantic Diagram. Uh, this is pretty much the heart and the soul of this deck. Uh, it's You pop a card in your hand or on the field and search a card. This, de this card is really good in a bunch of other different decks too, just because of how good its effect is. And uh, it makes it where they can't be attacked over once per turn. And it gives them an attack boost, which is nice, because Masterpiece isn't... It not being exactly 3,000 kind of hurts it. Uh, and next, you run the three terraforming to complement the field spell. Um, really important you run three terraforming because you want to see the field spell as much as possible. And even if you draw a field spell with the terraforming, uh, uh, you can just use activate the field spell to pop the terraforming. Or you can activate the terraforming to bait out the uh, like a, a hand trap or something. So it is really good just playing uh, three of each. Um, next you run three card demise, uh, really good, just draw power. Um, most of these spell cards are power spells, besides like the ones that tribute. <coughs> Excuse me. But most of them are, uh, power spells just to help you draw more cards and dig deeper in your deck for resources. And it's just overall a really good card. Uh, and you definitely should be playing three of it, because you never special summon off, unless you summon off of, uh, um, return. Which you almost, you, you do it some, but it's at one, so it doesn't happen much. Uh, same thing with Pod Duality. You almost never special summon, so Pod Duality is always live. Um, you run three of it. And you get some super pots, just because now this whole deck is like really hollowed out, and I just need the 
the hollow pots and like a, a hot, um, hollow upstart and I'd be it unless you don't count rares because I do have a rare uh, skill drain but uh, next you run two pile desires um, it's really good in in this deck in particular just because uh, really most of the time you already searched your masterpiece by the time you activate this so all you're banishing is a bunch of spells and traps and you just get two free cards which is always nice and you want them to be like like if you're going first you want them to be floodgates if you're going second, you kind of want them to be like maybe like a Raigeki or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, next you run one Upstart. Upstart's really good. Just draw cards. As you can see, most of these uh, spells are all like draw one, add one, something like that. Uh, except for these two, one Raigeki, just because you know it's Raigeki, it's a good card. Uh, one the Monarch Stormforth. By the way, in my last video, uh, people were saying, why are you running Raigeki in a going first deck? Uh, I mean, you don't have to draw it going first for it to be good. If you draw it late game, Raigeki is very powerful and can change the tide of the duel instantly. Uh, it's just a very, very powerful card. And if you're not playing it in a deck, uh, I don't really know what to tell you, big dog. It's a really good card. You should really rethink your uh, thoughts about Raigeki. That's it about spells. Um, next for traps, you run three, True Draco, Apocalypse. Uh, again, just a tribute, but it's a tribute during your opponent's turn, which is always nice. It catches them off guard, and it pops uh, monsters, which is always good, trying to break boards and things like that. Uh, and that's pretty much all it really does. The, the first effect is very irrelevant. Uh, you, like, pop a card, and then something gains attack or something like that. It's not very... I don't hardly ever use it. Uh, then you play one uh, True King's Return. You special summon a True King or True Draco monster from your graveyard, and then it has the same uh, tributing effect and uh the same popping effect and next for traps you run three the monarchs erupt uh this card is almost always live in this deck and it's really good against a bunch of different decks because there's almost nothing that penalty that uh tribute summons except for uh true draco and like monarchs but that's about it and these are just really really good against so many different types of decks like pendulums it's like pretty much a blowout against pendulums if you just activate this on them like summoning something like on like a pin summon you activate this and all their stuff's negated or if they make electromite you activate this electromite's negated uh it's just really good against a bunch of different types of decks uh same thing with skill drain i mean pretty much it's, it's like the, it's, it's like you're running four copies of skill drain but the actual copy of skill drain is in itself is easier to activate uh and most of the time masterpiece will be immune by trap so it doesn't even matter because it won't be negated and um if you do need to get some monster effects off, you can always just tribute the skill drain itself. Uh, so that's the reason why the floodgates in this deck are so good, because you can get rid of them whenever you want to. They don't really cost you anything in keeping them on the field. And the last card of my deck is Imperial Order. Uh, this card is so good. Um, if you draw Imperial Order, the Monarchs Erupt, and some way to get a tribute summon monster on the field, you I, I cannot tell you how many people will forfeit. Because... They uh they have to pop the imperial uh they have to pop pop the mon the uh the um the monarchs erupt without getting a uh like with a with a monster effect that's like not on the field because the monarchs erupt negates it and they can't pop it with a spell because imperial order stops spells so they have to either pop it with a trap which is kind of unlikely I mean I guess uh dust tornado or whatever the card's called um the one that pops too it's like a twin twister but you skip your battle phase or something. Uh, or you have to pop it with monster effects in the hand, like Ghost Ogre, I guess, would work. But these don't activate their effects after they're already activated, so that, or this one does, but it's not that big of a deal. And then always, like I said, you can always just get rid of Imperial Order, uh, by tributing off, and then you can activate all your power spells, and then you can just pretty much just run over your opponent because they couldn't do anything there during their turn because they didn't have any access to spells. Uh, also stops scales, so, uh, overall it's just a really, really good card. So that's it with the deck profile, guys. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I've been wanting to do this deck profile for so long. I've been trying to get this deck together for a very long time. And I finally did it. And now that I have the card of demise, a bunch of other deck profiles uh, suddenly become open to me. Like uh, Paleos. So be looking out for a Paleo deck profile because I already had everything I needed for them besides the card of demise. So uh, just make sure to be on the lookout for that because um, I'm pretty excited about that deck profile too. Uh, Paleos are really cool. But uh, anyway, guys, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.